10.2 completing the square. It's MA912 AR3.8. So we're going to rewrite quadratic expressions in completed factor form and solve quadratic equations by completing the square. So first thing, completing the square, think of the form x squared plus bx plus the parentheses b over 2 squared, this is our c value, equals x plus b over 2 squared, it collapses. So remember, we need to be in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0 in order to complete the square. So the first part is, what should your b over 2 squared be? So, and here it says x squared minus 24x. Remember, the b value in this instance is negative 24. So what we want for our blank is negative 24 divided by 2 squared. So we become negative 12 squared to 144. So we have 144 is what we would put there. On b, it says x squared minus 9 over 5x plus something. So our b value in this instance is negative 9 over 5. The blank is going to be negative 9 over 5 all divided by 2 squared. So remember, these two are going to combine together. So we now see negative 9 over 5 times 2 is 10 squared. So our blank is going to be 81 over 100. So now we're going to apply what we just did in this example to example 2, 3. So it says x squared minus 7x plus 7 equals 0. First thing, in order to do completing the square, you need to move the 7. So we're going to subtract the 7 over. So we have x squared minus 6x plus a blank equaling negative 7. And I'm going to put a blank on the other side. So the reason I'm doing this is because think of a plane or a boat. You need to make sure that everything is balanced and equal. So whatever you do to the left side of an equation, you must do to the right side to make it balanced. So now we're going to do 6 divided by 2. That is my negative 3 squared to 9. So I'm going to add a 9 to the left. I'm going to add a 9 to the right. So now we become x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 2. Here, this becomes x minus, because remember our value here, because according to our original thing, the spacing it's b over 2. Well, our b over 2 was a negative 3. So I'm going to write minus 3 squared equals 2. And now I'm going to apply the square root property that we learned in the previous lesson. So you're taking the square root of both sides. So we get x minus 3 equals positive and negative square root of 2. Add 3 over. So x equals 3 plus and minus the square root of 2. Okay, in example 4-5, um, this one says 2x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. So the leading coefficient is not a 1. So first thing, we want to make it a 1, so I'm going to divide everything by 2. So we become x squared minus 1 half x minus 1 equal to 0. Next thing you're going to do is you are going to move the 1 over. So now I have x squared minus 1 half x plus a blank equals positive 1 plus a blank because we want to balance both sides of the equation. Again, remember, you're dividing the middle one by 2. It becomes 1 fourth, which I need to square. So now I'm going to say this is 1 16th. And I'm going to do 1 16th to the right side. Remember, you're saving the boat, balancing it always. So now we become x squared, x minus, because it's a minus sign here, 1 fourth, because that is what's in the bubble, squared equals now here we have 1 plus 1 16th. Remember, six, 1 is the same thing as saying 16 over 16. So 16 plus 1 makes it 17 over 16. Then, because it's a power of 2, you're going to use square root property. You're just taking the square root of everything. So we become x minus 1 fourth equals positive negative square root of 17. You cannot take the square root of 16 is a perfect square, so it's a 4 and then add the 1 fourth over. So we become x equals 1 fourth plus and minus square root of 17 over 4. On b, same thing. It says 3x squared minus 6x plus 1 equal to 0. So leading coefficient is not a 1. Go ahead and divide everything by 3. So we become x squared minus 2x 
plus one third equals zero. Move the one third over, so we get x squared minus two x plus a blank equals negative one third plus another blank. Again, remember, you're completing the squares, so you're dividing by two, so become negative one squared. So it means I'm adding a positive one. I'm adding a positive one. So now we become x minus one squared equals now it's a fraction with a whole number remember one is the same thing saying three over three so i'm short a dollar found three i have two over three is where i'm at here you're going to take the square root of both sides so top and bottom so it become x minus one equals plus and minus the square root of two over the square root of three so here's the problem you're not allowed to have a radical in the denominator so you need to rationalize the denominator by multiplying top and bottom by that denominator so the square root of three so we become x minus one equals positive and negative square root of six over three times three is the square root of nine and the square root of nine is a whole three so now i have a whole number and the last step is add the one over so we get x equals one plus and minus square root of six over three